Namaste. How's it going? How do we engage the Vandas in the practice of pranayama and mudra and the order of their utilization? Hopefully, this lesson helps you understand the basic concepts and principles behind them so you can safely practice them yourself. All right. So we have three bandhas, the Mula Bandha, the Heps, yeah, the Udiyana Bandha, yeah, the core region around the navel, and the Jalandhara Bandha, the neck and the throat. All right. So we utilize them both organically, meaning we don't squeeze, we don't tighten, we don't do any external adjustments, we just breathe through it, and externally. Externally is when we do some subtle adjustments of the external body and then some movement of the inner musculature. But we don't squeeze, we don't tighten, we don't clench. Yeah. I'm not a proponent of squeezing the body, clenching, tightening. Yeah. You will do some gentle adjustment, minor adjustments, yeah, both internally and externally, but we don't do them in a way that we feel rigid, tight, and compressed. All right. But for example, yeah, you're doing your Nadi Shodana, yeah. You know, blocking one side. All right. So as you inspire the breath in, don't squeeze. Just breathing in, keeping the spine tall, of course, that's given. Can you feel the energy rise? Can you feel the sensation of the breath ascending? Yeah. That's already your bandas manifesting organically. Our body is so intelligent, absorbing the breath. All right. And when we feel it, and when we utilize the mental power to feel it and channelize it, that's already your bandhas working for you in an organic state. And this is meaningful. Why? All right. The bandhas, although they're commonly called locks, yeah, they're not actually uh, tightening, compressing. They're valves. Yeah. Like your faucet, the, you can tighten, you can unscrew the faucet so you can allow you know, water to flow yeah, in different intensities. They're regulators. All right. The bandhas would have to be open first, meaning the body would have to be open first, yeah, so that when you inspire the breath, you can rise the breath up. You can draw your energy up and at the same time inspiring the prana to go inside the body. If you tighten your body and clenching and squeezing, it won't happen. You are not doing the internal energetic functions of the bandhas. Actually, you're doing the other, I say, the counter yeah, productive part. All right? So although you may hear uh, read text and instructions there, instruction you to tighten, squeeze. No. All right. So when you inspire the breath, relax. Yeah. Whether you're doing both sides or one, yeah. breathing in. Good. This rising breath, this rising sensation is already a collective work of your bandhas. Yeah, channelizing your energy upwards. Right. Although it's given that your spine would have to remain open, whether sitting or lying down or reclining, so you don't slouch. Yeah, you have to keep it upright, but not tight and rigid. Alert. Yeah, alert is the word. Yeah, alert the mind, alert the body. Okay. Now. Yeah. If you're doing a retention, kumbhaka is the essence of pranayama. All right. So kumbhaka would have to be approached with care. All right. But we are all capable of suspending the breath for a moment, yeah, depending on your nature, depending on your level and ability. Maybe two seconds, four seconds, or even go as high as eight seconds for a beginner or 16 seconds for an advanced practitioner. We're all capable of retaining the breath, and that's enough, okay? Yeah, so for me, I hold, I do my retention, maybe just a max of 
30 seconds per um, pranayama, per round or per repetition. Sometimes I would hold it longer, but it depends on the state of our bodies yeah, at that particular moment or situation. Yeah, so listen to your body, feel it, all right, and start small, start uh, gentle. All right, inspiring of the breath in. Ascending, our energy is rising, all right, and the grace descends yeah, to blend with our energy, and they both rise. That's why you feel yeah, that your body rises, you feel light as you inspire. That's your bandhas working for you. Okay, now. At the top of the breath, that's where you're going to utilize some internal and external adjustments. Okay, now, let me angle. Nadi Shodana, for example. Now, don't engage the bandas, don't squeeze, just breathe. Use the mind. Breathing in. At the top of the breath, yeah, you're going to initiate first using the throat, yeah, Folding the head close to the chest, like the chin move closer to yeah, the sternum, yeah, and then hang the shoulders slightly up. All right, utilize the breath. Yeah, you don't want to be yeah clenching. You don't want to be tightening. And this is like um, coordination. So as you breathe in, definitely the shoulders will lightly hang at the top. Retain that light sensation. Lightly close the chest. Close the throat. All right, now, the Jalandara Bandha, I initiate it first, all right. I'm not a proponent of clenching the anal genital region, yeah. Although you might try a couple or maybe a minute of uh, Ashvini Mudra before your practice of uh, Pranayama. So clench and open, clench and open, clench and open, and that's enough for you to feel the subtleness of your Mula Bandha. All right. Okay. Now, yeah, speaking of mula bandha, this is important. All right. So the mula bandha, yeah, when you engage the mula bandha, so the perineum rises up because you're drawing the energy up. All right. You can either do that by clenching and lightly tightening the perineum, but that's for me is very superficial. Yes, as you clench it, definitely you're gonna yeah push. Yeah, the sensation up. And with the breath, yeah, moving up, yeah, it could help you. But it's not sustainable you know, tightening the perineum as you hold the retention because it will actually cause compression. So a healthy, for me, a more meaningful engagement of the mula bandha is to relax it. Relax the hips. All right. When you relax the hips, you will be able to feel the subtle yeah, manifestation or sensation of the breath. Yeah. How can you catch yeah, that subtle primal sensation if you're too busy clenching and squeezing? Try that. Yeah. So relax the hips. Yeah. Inspire the breath in. Just slightly nod the head and let the shoulders hang. Don't tighten the hips. Don't clench. And then you will feel actually that your hips will involuntarily go narrow inside like this tube yeah, from that relaxed hips. As you inspire the breath in, because as you draw the breath in, the tube, yeah, the channel narrows towards the midline as you ascend the breath out. All right, that's your mula bandha. All right, the most external manifestation of the bandha is actually here, the jalandhara, and the shoulders slightly hanging loose up. All right, the reason being this shoulders lifting up lightly up or upwards will assist you, yeah, engage the last bandha in order, the udhyana. All right, now the Udiyana Bandha is actually engaged or applied as you inspire the breath in, organic, as you inhale, you're, you're, you're going to feel the muscles inside the belly, hug the spine and rise, but you don't, you're not squeezing, breathing in, and yeah, let me, if I may, yeah, good, yeah. breathing in, 
as the shoulders hang as a spin, the side trunk lengthen, and the lower belly muscles pull back and draws up, engaging the front, hang the shoulders. I'm not squeezing. I'm just using, utilizing, I'm just riding the wave of that ascending breath. And it happens involuntarily. All right. Udi and Abanda, without squeezing, without clenching. All right, you might ask me. All right. As you inspire the breath in, definitely the diaphragm descends. And that will make or cause the belly to lightly uh, inflate. But the inflation or the, the expanding of the belly is not bulging. All right. So this is um, um, very uh, tricky to understand, yeah, because um, commonly we're taught or you know, we're instructed as we breathe, expand the belly, all right? Open the belly, bulge the tummy, allow the breath to go there. No, we're not breathing through the tummy. Remember that. The reason our belly opens up in yeah, the practice of, for example, natural breath or pranayama, yeah, it's because the diaphragm descends, and this causes the muscles, the abdomen muscles, to open up. However, internally, you feel the muscles actually hug in and up. All right. And externally, this will manifest as a thinning yeah, adjustment of the abdomen wall, yeah, and internally, you're going to feel yeah, a brace. Really, as you inspire the breath in, definitely from the peripheries. Remember, bandhas, although they're called locks, they're not literally locks. Yeah, they're not compressing. They're not clenching. They're valves. They're regulators. Like the faucet, you can turn the faucet in and up. You know, so you can regulate the flow of water. Same as the bandhas. As you inspire the breath in, yeah, they collect yeah, all the energetic forces towards the midline. That's why it feels narrow inside as you ascend the breath up. This drawing action of the nostrils initiate the drawing or the, the lifting action. And the bandas inside organically assist you in gathering the energy to the midline so you can lift the energy up. And the external adjustment yes, will help you just uh, support the internal uh, actions or functions of the bandhas. Right. Again, this is important. Bandhas is never about squeezing, tightening, clenching. No. Bandhas is the collective work of your breath, your mental awareness, and of course, the openness of your internal system. Right. Therefore, yeah, for us to benefit from the bandhas, we need to do our continuing work of cleansing our inner body and the physical observances as well. Because yeah, this involves the body. Therefore, the hips and the spine yeah, would have to, remain, to be open, flexible enough to do those minor adjustments inside, especially the joints. And yeah, the functions of the respiratory system would have to be developed through, through the practice of, of course, asana, yeah, to strengthen our muscles and um, to build our cardiorespiratory system and pranayamas, yeah, cleansing techniques as well, and off the mat observances. All of this, yeah, when you combine them all together, will help you attain and develop the bandhas in an organic sense. All right, so even how hard you tighten and clench there, if there are no internal awareness, you are not benefiting from your energy locks. Yes, you might be able to really tighten and clench and then look externally like, wow, but internally, it's not happening. All right. So that's inhalation. So inhalation, there's so many things to understand already. But when you feel it, when you breathe mindfully, yeah, my words just become like words yeah, because you will understand them yourself as a direct experience. Now, exhalation. 
Right, so after your retention, as you exhale, just relax the throat, let the shoulders relax. And here, yes, again, inhale, the belly goes thin and up. Exhaling, relax slightly the shoulders. And the abdomen walls <laughs> goes even deeper and hollow, like you're creating that vacuum and seal. All right, because the diaphragm ascends up again, because the lungs empty, therefore, the core region flattens and goes deep. But you don't squeeze, you don't tighten, you don't clench, you don't feel rigid at all. So bandas, yeah, yeah although they're called locks, yeah, they're not physical locks. They are energetic regulators of valve. We open them so we can allow the breath to enter our bodies and at the same time allow our inner potentials to move towards the midline. And as we are able to collect them already, we lightly close yeah, or tighten yeah, the, the valve so we can keep them in or confined in the midline. And as we hold the retention, the nadis yeah, absorb them and the bandhas yeah, collectively help each other to rise the energy up. Good. And exhale the old air out. Allow the bandhas to open again. Yeah. But the Udiyana Bandha in the exhalation is active organically. The belly muscles hug in. Why? Yeah. To prevent whatever energy will lift up already to descend back to your hips. Because the work of the function of energy channeling is to keep lifting the energy up. And at the same time, prevent the pressure coming from that kumbhaka to end up hurting our internal organs. So the Udiyana Bandha is actually both an energetic regulator and a support mechanism for the spine and our internal system. Beautiful. So in summary, inspire the breath in. Mindful ascending. You may lightly lift your forehead Hang lightly, closing. You feel this organic hugging, retention. Exhale, relax shoulders. You may loosen lightly. And the Udiyana Bandha yeah, happens last. And then we do it again, breathing in. The Udiyana Bandha opens, but the sensation rises. The walls of the belly, your lentils. Exhale, the lungs empty, the diaphragm rises, and the belly muscles hollow and brace the spine. Right. So that's bandhas in organic sense. That's the bandha in an energetic experience thank you for listening and really a pleasure i'll see you in our next lesson namaste bye